Welcome. In this video, I would like to talk about the prediction horizon and the prediction error method and the PEM method. And in the previous video, we have basically already discussed the prediction horizon not directly, but just implicitly, because what we have considered there was a so-called simulation case. So using some pre-knowledge about the initial state, we basically evaluated the model fit and the PEM method for the entire time we had simulation data for. So we started here and we basically simulated the entire time span back uh, to the future just on the knowledge of the inputs which we had in the data. So that's a classical approach which we call simulation approach. However, we can also do another approach which is slightly different, uh, which is called the prediction approach. There we also take, of course, a dynamic model of our system and we also threw in some inputs, u of t, but additionally we assume that we also have access to the past outputs y of t and that our task is to basically predict y at of t plus delta t. So big difference here is we also have access to the old data, so anything back in the past, and we should make a prediction about the future sufficiently well of a distinct time state delta t. So if we want to visualize that, that would be something like this. So here is t, and let's say that's x or y, doesn't matter for the moment. So let's say we are here at some t0, so we have access to this past data, and now our task would be to predict the future of this trajectory for a time span delta t. Okay? So slightly somehow similar, but also a little bit different in that sense that this prediction approach utilizes also past data eventually and its prediction length, this delta t, might be shorter than the entire time window which we have available as data points. So therefore we can consider the simulation case more or less as a special case of the prediction case because what we can do is we can basically set delta t to the entire simulation length of the entire data set and in this case the prediction case, the prediction scenario would basically converge to the simulation case where we need to predict the entire trajectory over time. Let's discuss um, this also based on a practical example and for this practical example we just make use of the standard linear time discrete um, model which we have already evaluated a couple of times before, in particular using again comparing the ordinary least squares identification with the PEM with the predictive error method. If we do so, we first need to come up with a somehow new cost function, right? Because this cost function in the prediction case where I only predict a certain amount of time is a little bit different than in the simulation case. And let's sketch that. Particularly what is the difference in the prediction case is that let's say this is the time axis and this is let's say the state axis. So let's say this is the true system and that is t0, t1, t2 with time steps delta t in between, that from this point on in the prediction case we would predict something, let's say like this, then this would be our 
for example, error area of the prediction error. And then at time step T1, since we have access to the past data, we could basically reinitialize our internal model to X at T1 and would predict continuing with this new knowledge and eventually get like something like this. Then this would be our error area which we sum up in the cost function and then we would eventually jump back here to T1 where we have again knowledge about our system and then continue predicting something and so on and so on. Right, so in the prediction case we basically have intermittent base points which we can reinitialize to, which we can utilize in order to update the internal states of our model, which we cannot do in the simulation case because there we have to model everything in one shot uh, uh, directly from the initial time point to the final time point. Okay, so a little bit different flavor here, but somehow similar. And the interesting case why I want to show that up to you um, is this figure here. In this figure, what we have basically here is on the x-axis, NP in a logarithmic scale, and NP in the discrete time case is how many prediction steps should I predict into the future before I can reinitialize my model based on past knowledge, right? So basically, uh, NP being here a very large value, uh, 10 to the power of 2, so 100 prediction steps, that would be more or less already the simulation case where I simulate from start to finish in one shot for this linear system which we have at hand. And in this case we can see that the PEM and the ordinarily square cases, they are distinctly different. So the PEM case is much better and the ordinarily square case uh, has a problem, so right, so the costs uh, are distinctly different. Actually, this is also the cost which we get from the previous video from this contour plot. This is the minimum value of the PEM plot in the contour plot of the previous video, and this is the cost of the OLS from the previous contour plot. Okay, however, then we see when we reduce the number of prediction steps to a couple of single digit values, that the ordinary least squares on the PEM method, they become actually similar. And how can we explain that? In the PEM case, it's quite easy to explain because the PEM case we have optimized in the simulation scenario, right? So we took the entire data, propagated it through our model, and using a solver, an optimizer, we tried to optimize the model based on the entire simulation length. So that's why our PEM model had been optimized for the simulation case, so for long time spans, and that's why we find its minimum here. On the contrary, the ordinary least squares method, if you consider how we made the data matrices in the OLS case with the regression model, with the output model, and so on, that was basically always looking from k to k plus one, right? So in the output and in the regression matrices and vectors, we had k and k plus one, so we basically had a set of one-step tr state transitions, so one-step predictions. So therefore, the OLF method, while it also has these parameter bias issues, it has been technically optimized for one-step predictions. And that we can also see here on this plot that the OLS performs best when we just consider these one-step predictions and then when we reinitialize the model based on the past measurements. Okay, and therefore we have this distinctly different behavior. Another takeaway message from that is that, of course, OLS performs better when we reduce the number of prediction steps, but another takeaway message is also that we actually have a degree of freedom here in terms of the PEM method, because the prediction error method can be uh, optimized for different prediction horizons. In the previous video, we have just basically, by a choice of us, um, predicted everything in the simulation case where we simulated from start to finish. However, we do not need to. And therefore, we can basically utilize the prediction error method to optimize the model for different scenarios. We can either optimize for the simulation case or we can optimize for the prediction case considering a certain amount of prediction steps. And depending on this optimization scenario, the generated model might perform differently if we leave this optimization context, as we can see here in this graph, where we leave 
the simulation case for the PEM method and go to the one-step prediction case where the performance obviously gets a little bit worse. In that sense, you uh, might also see that in some um, third-party toolboxes which apply a prediction error method-based optimization to data-driven models that you can basically choose for a focus area if this model should be more focused on the simulation case or on the single-step prediction case. I hope that gives you some interesting insights into our degrees of flexibility, how we can utilize optimization-based methods and the prediction error methods, and I'm looking forward to go through this topic with you in the following videos. Thank you.